My name is Natalia Mendez. Topic of today is going to be coping with a serious illness. So I'm going to start off with going over what could be considered a serious illness. Of course, any illness can be serious, but some are more serious than others. So, for example, seasonal allergies. Anybody can get them. Of course, it just takes a change in temperature, different setting, or maybe even being triggered by the airborne illnesses that we encounter every day. Seasonal allergy symptoms can range from coughing, sneezing, runny nose, itchy eyes, etc. But of course, with treatment, seasonal allergies can be cured. On the other hand, we have things such as lung cancer, one of the most vital parts of the body undergoing cancer. Of course, cancer can cause complication in the lungs, such as struggling to breathe, shortness of breath, fluid in the lungs, pain in the lungs, and even, it can even spread to different parts of the body causing a metastasis point. So once one reaches this metastasis state, there are little to no treatments to cure this disease. According to the American Lung Association, lung cancer is one of the leading causes of cancer death. So you can only imagine what one might feel when diagnosed with this unfortunate illness. So with that said, let's stop for a moment. Close your eyes. Let's say you come down with a regular cough. Let's say that cough tends to worsen throughout the first week. The first thing you do is obviously take your typical cough syrup and you call it a day. Then, hence, week two, you start to feel a little gurgle in your chest. You start to feel pain when coughing. Of course, you might try different cough syrups, maybe some cough drops, if possible. Let's say you let week three slide by. At that point, cough is getting unbearable. You feel like nothing is getting better and it's getting worse. What would be your next course of action? You'd make a doctor's appointment, right? Okay, let's say you make that doctor's appointment and you tell the doctor all the symptoms you've been experiencing. Of course, with that said, the doctor's gonna be concerned and refer you to get x-rays done on your lungs to see what's going on. So let's say he puts in that referral, you go to that x-ray appointment, you get those x-rays done, then what's next? You make that follow-up appointment to see your results. Let's say you walk into the doctor's appointment, you sit down with the doctor. Doctor asks you how you're feeling. You tell him the same symptoms have been going on and you feel like it's worsening. And let's say he just sits down, sits down. He goes over his findings with you. He tells you that you have stage four lung cancer. How would you process news like that? How do you even begin to cope with something like that? There's really nothing but questions that would probably arise. Maybe the why, how, or when. There's just nothing that you can cope with receiving news like that. But first things first, you want to find out more about this terminal illness. You want to get to know what this illness is. You can do that by, of course, educating yourself by doing your own research online or you can even schedule a patient education with your clinic. Maybe even writing down questions for your following doctor's appointment to ask. All of these can be good resources when trying to get yourself familiarized with illnesses, such as stage four lung cancer, just to know what to expect. It can sometimes be hard to process news like that, but having the upper hand on knowing what to expect can make you feel more at ease. But nevertheless, emotions will keep surging when coming to terms with a serious illness such as that. Which brings us to the five stages of grief. The five stages of grief. Does anybody know what the five stages of grief is? No? No. Totally fine. The five stages of grief is a model first introduced by Kubler-Ross, a Swiss psychiatrist. 
It's a model used to describe the process in which someone might go through when experiencing grief. So think of it as going almost through an emotional roller, roller coaster. What do roller coasters do? They go up and down. So everyone experiences grief differently, but there are some similarities. Let's start it off with the first stage, which is the stage of denial. One might be in a state of shock due to the fact that life that you once knew has abruptly changed forever. When you receive the news of having stage four lung cancer, you might even say it's a mistake. Maybe there was a switch up during those x-rays. Maybe you got somebody else's results. Of course, that's just the way our body's natural defense mechanism when it comes to com being confronted with overwhelming news such as that. Although, once the shock and denial starts to subside, the healing process begins. All those emotions you repressed inside are now going to be coming up to the surface, bringing us to the second stage, which is the state of anger. You start to, in a way, accept reality as it is, but still question why this had to happen to you. One might even take it out on loved ones, but nevertheless, it's a common feeling you experience when experiencing grief. Then comes the bargaining stage. Think of it as false hope. You, in a way, make yourself believe that you can avoid grief through some type of negotiation. Basically saying, if you change this, you can change that. It's almost like your last chance in obtaining your old life by making yourself believe that if you have to make some sort of major change, that you can get your life back as you once knew it to be. Then comes the depression stage. In this stage, you might withdraw from life. You might feel numb. You won't want to get out of bed. The world might seem too much and too overwhelming for you to face. But once all those emotions stabilize and enter into reality once more, you go into the acceptance stage, which is the time of adjustments and readjustments. In this stage, you might lift from your fog. You start to realize that there are good and bad days, and then there are good days again. With that being said, everyone's going to have bad days but there will always be good days again. 